to show you one of my favorite techniques for coloring stamped images and that's a kind of a watercolor technique now it's not a really intense technique what we do is we put the color on really quickly and really just lay it down so that we get the idea of where those colors sit so I call it slap happy watercolor you might have heard me talk about that before um, I use it a lot on floral images and things like that so what we're going to be using today we're um, starting with the new blue wrens set of stamps so we've got these two little birds I've also got the inks that I'm going to be using today now these are water-based inks because the technique we're using is a water technique you can use whatever water-based inks that you have already in your stash the way to tell if they're water-based is by reading the back of the label and um, that'll usually tell you what the base is whether it's solvent or alcohol or in this case water if for whatever reason it doesn't say on your label or you can't find it maybe you've removed it you can just apply a little bit of the color onto a piece of paper and then take a water brush or any sort of water that you have even just spritzing now if the color moves when you touch it that's how you know that it's water based uh, so that's the sort of the color that you want whatever you have in your stash is fine this is another way when I start a, uh, a coloring project like this this is how I choose my colors so I lay out uh, a variety and decide what they're going to look like sometimes they're quite different than what the label says on the top so just have a little piece of testing paper close by to test out your colors before you actually do your proper project and make sure you use the same paper that you're going to use for your project because that can often have a big impact as well all right so we're using watercolor card I have a piece already cut out here and it has a, a one side is quite rough and the other is a little smoother I'm going to be using the side that's a little rougher so a little bit more tooth um, I personally like that it gives a little more texture and uh, I find that it just it, it to me it looks better but if you prefer a smoother texture that's fine you can use the other side now I also have my acrylic block standing by so what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up my stamps now I'm going to use both so I'm going to have this little guy here at the bottom and this little fellow at the top here is going to be singing so it's a it's a, a double stamping for me if you have a stamping platform then of course you can use that if you prefer I tend not to I tend to just uh, stamp straight onto uh, the cardstock with my acrylic block now what I'm I'm doing here is I've laid my image here I'm going to take each of my inks and I am going to apply those inks to the stamp in roughly the area where I think they're going to be so if I start with my my brown this is gathered twigs and I'm just going to stamp along the twig that the little bird's standing on don't worry about being too precise you're not going to be able to get it exactly in the right place that's fine don't worry about that next I'm going to use the green which is in this case mowed lawn and I'm going to apply that to the leaves and here and there on that stick as well just for a little bit of variation so just laying that down here and there I also have a dark uh, darker green peeled paint that I'm going to actually use when I come to uh, actually color the image so I'm, I'm not going to use that right now um, you don't need to be really fussy about it next color I'm going to use is on the bird and this is salty ocean it's a really pretty bright blue and I'm going to use this all over the bird now I'm going to apply a little bit of black just around the birds beak and eye and a little bit in to the tail the tips of the tail it doesn't matter too much about where you put this black because we're going to come in and we're going to paint the entire picture anyway all right so there we go I have the first little bird all stamped up and what I'm going to do is apply that down at the bottom corner so he's going to be right down in the bottom corner nice and perky now with your stamped images no matter what sort of stamped image or what sort of paper or what sort of ink you're using you don't need to apply a lot of pressure it does need to be firm because the paper often will have uh, hills and valleys so you do want to push that ink down into those hills and valleys particularly watercolor paper but what you need to do is allow that ink to transfer so leave it on there for you know well I've left it on there for a long time but three to five seconds don't just sort of stamp down really quickly and lift it and then you'll get a much nicer image 
by placing it there for a little bit longer and giving that ink time to, to move over to the paper. Okay, so there's our first little guy. He's looking nice. I'm going to just take off this stamp and we're gonna grab our other bird. Right, so a little bit on his tail as well. And then I'm going to apply this one at the top of my paper so that they're together. You can see how they fit just nicely. When I designed the stamp, I knew that I wanted to use both of the images on the one project. And so I made it so that when you put them close together, they would fit nicely. All right, so we're just, again, we're waiting that a little bit longer, a little bit longer with the watercolor card. As I mentioned, it has lots of tooth. So the up and down in the surface of the paper. So you wanna just give it a little bit longer to absorb. And then you get two nice clear images. Right. Now I'm going to use my acrylic block as a palette. So that's where I'm going to lay down my color, my ink, and pick it up with my water brush. Now you don't have to use a water brush like this if you want to use uh, a, a ordinary watercolor brush or an ordinary brush and just dip it into some water, that's fine too. So the first thing we're going to do, I like to start light and then work into the darks. So believe it or not, black is the first color I'm going to use. I need a little bit because it goes a long way. And this is going to be for the bird's stomachs. So the stomach is actually white, but we're going to apply just a little bit of texture and shadow. So you can see how I'm patting in that color. I'm not going to use the black in big swirls or, or big areas of color because I just want to get really that texture. And I'm going to keep it to the areas just under the wing there and along the belly of the bird. Okay, mostly you can see how the blue is starting to work in with that gray or the, the black. That's exactly what we're looking for. So I'm keeping it nice and light. The more water that you apply to your ink over here on your palette, the lighter that color is going to be. So it washes out the color. It still stays true. I find that the distressed ink is very good like that. It stays true to color. As you wash it out, it doesn't turn sort of brown or, or sometimes purpley in color. All right, so we, you can see I've just really applied texture uh, to, my, to my bird. I've got a little piece of paper towel here that I just wipe off the color if I want to uh, start with a clean brush. Next, I'm going to go with the, the blue, which is Salty Ocean. I'm going to leave a little bit more of this. Probably that's a little bit too much. But this, the blue uh, on this particular bird, this is on the hood of the bird. So I'm just going to color it in. I'm not going to be too particular. If you miss a few little spots, that's okay. It is watercolor. It's quite forgiving like that. So we're just going to color those two little areas and across the back of the bird just here. And then the same on this little fellow down here. So just under the eye, there's a patch. I've already marked them out with the image itself. Now, if you're looking to do something perhaps a little bit more um, artistic, you can do any color. You don't have to do the bird in the same color that, that I'm doing. Now I'm gonna leave those areas. So rather than, than painting the blacks and the other colors, I'm gonna leave the bird to dry just for a little while. And I'm going to paint in the stem and the, the leaves now. So again, we're picking up that color. All I'm going to do is drag the brown down the stem, avoiding the little bird's feet all the way to the end, both stems. Again, we're gonna avoid the bird's feet and you can see how light that is. Anytime you're coloring and regardless of what media you're using, what paper you're using, think of coloring in layers. So we do our coloring in layers. This is the first layer that I'm adding now. So it's gonna be the lightest layer. Even if you're coloring with your alcohol markers, your pencils, whatever medium you're using, there's always layers and that will give you contrast and depth and dimension. Lots of uh, terms there, but that's what we're looking for. So don't be too neat, as I said before, Don't. there's no worries about being too neat and don't overwork the image. So remember we talked before about the fact that it's watercolor and I'm coming over with more water. I don't want to spend lots of time scrubbing over these leaves. I'm going to lose all those little details. So I do want them to soften, but I don't want to lose 
the lines and things like that. So they will soften. You can see how they're softening under that color already. Now I'm going to also add a little bit of that darker green, just for a little bit of contrast, especially around the stick. So where the, the leaf, each of the leaves meet that little twig, that's where you're going to have that this sort of um, muddier green, the yellower green. But again, you don't have to add this. You can just work with that one color if you prefer. All right, so almost done. Then we're gonna go back to our bird so that we'll have had a chance to dry just a little bit, which is exactly what we want. Okay, right. So back to our birds. Now, the around the face of the bird and the eye is, is black. So again, we're going to pick up some of that black ink. Again, not fully, uh, fully black, I guess. You, you do wanna have a little bit of water mixed in there because again, we're looking at layers of color and also you don't wanna lose all of that detail. So their little beak is black and their little legs are kind of a gray color. So a little bit more water mixed in there when you paint in those little legs. Just hooked around the branch there and the uh, chest of the bird as well is black and the tail has some black in it so what I'm going to do with the tail is I'm actually going to start at the tip of the tail on some of the feathers and I'm just going to drag my brush down toward the bottom of the the bird I'm not going to fill in all the detail because a lot of that is is a very dark blue as well but just a little bit of that that black into the tail feathers and you can also work from the bottom of the bird upward to the tip of the tail if you if you like all right and we're going to put a little bit more black in to this bird's face around the eye Tap it all in here on the chest. And around the back, just above the wing there. And again, let's not forget the little legs. Right. Now the, the tail of the bird here is also, I need a little bit more ink. The tail of the bird also has quite a little bit of black in it and blue as well. So we're going to just paint in using the tip of your brush. So if you can see how I'm coming up on the very tip of my brush, what I'm getting is those nice sharp points. So there's nice sharp feathers. Turn your work to make it easier for yourself. So you can see how when I touch down with my brush, I get that nice sharp point on the feather. So patting, can you see I'm patting in that color? I'm not brushing in the color. I'm patting it in over the, uh, the the feathers of the bird. So pat, pat, pat. And that will give you that nice point for the feathers in several places. Okay, we're also gonna fill this in with a little bit more blue and a little bit more black a bit later on. So you can see how it's already taking its nice form. All right, now let's come in with some of the brown. Now, the little wings are, are a kind of muted brown color. So what I'm going to do is rather than get out another color, I'm going to mix the blue with a little bit of that really nice brown. Oh, uh, the, yeah, the blue with the light, the light blue with the brown, <laughs> beg your pardon. I'm trying to concentrate on two things at once. And all I'm going to do is add the color because we've already got that blue on the wing anyway from where we stamped you're going to get that, that change in color as well. So just those, those wings, those feathers that are nice and long at the base of the wing. We don't wanna to mix too many colors together at once. So we'll just draw them in first and we'll come back and do those feathers above the wing later. Right, now what I'm gonna do is sort of let those birds again dry for a while. And what we're gonna do is work back here on the stem. You can see that you can just keep going. It's not, um, a project that you need to stop and 
let dry. You can if you want to, but it's so tiny that they dry really quickly. Now I'm not going to repaint the entire branch with this brown. What I'm doing is dragging my brush along the bottom of the stem and that's kind of going to give a little bit of a, sh a shadow and this is going to be my second layer. So don't repaint the entire stem, just dot in some of the brown colour. So you can see I've got those variations. I've got a light at the top of the branch and I've got dark where I've come in with the second layer of color. And that's what we're always looking for when we color is the variation, that contrast. So just drag it along, just under the foot too. So color around the little bird's feet that will help both to cast a kind of a shadow and to detail the little feet. So down one side of that, that stem. And we're going to do the same with the leaves. So I'm going to actually do a mix of the two colors. So you remember I had that, that darker green and the light green. I'm gonna mix them together here on my palette. And what I'm going to do is trace down that center line of the leaf. And I'm only going to apply that green on one side, almost to the tip. So you can see how I didn't come all the way out to the edge of that leaf. And on the other side, I'm going to add just a few touches of color along the outside of that leaf. Now there's not really any scientific reason for that. Again, I'm just looking for that, that difference, that contrast. We don't want to repaint the whole leaf because all you'll get is one single shape of colour. What you want is those differences. So leaving some of it with just that one layer of colour will give you that difference. Okay, just pat along. Don't worry if you go outside the lines either. That's perfectly fine. All right, so we just add in that green on this last leaf. And then we'll switch over to the other bird. And again, not repainting the entire leaf. Just adding a little bit of extra detail here and there. Now, if you haven't over, overworked your leaf, you'll find that a lot of those uh, colors are already there from when you stamped. So you don't need to do a lot of work. But just add in a few of the lines if you wish, just to give it that, that, that difference. Oops, I hit the blue a little bit. That doesn't matter. You can certainly mix those colors. That's what watercoloring is all about. Just a little bit out to the tip of the leaf. Okay, and that's about enough for me for the leaves. Now I'm gonna go back to my bird and I'm going to do that same brush mix again. So a bit more of the blue this time with a little bit of that brown and I'm going to paint in those wings. Now I'm gonna turn my work so that my, the, the tip of my brush is at the end of the feather. I'm gonna wiggle and pull. A little bit more brown, wiggle and pull. And that helps me just to get the shape of the bottom of those wings or the, the tip of those wings. It's a little bit too much there. So we're gonna paint in. As you're working, when you go to pick up more of the paint, you can pick up a little bit more brown or you can pick up a little bit more blue. And what that's going to do is to help distinguish those feathers. So when they're slightly different color, that's gonna help you to distinguish those feathers. All right, with this bird, I'm going to turn again so that the, the, the feathers are, are going away from me and I can place the tip of my brush at the tip of the feather. Pick up a little bit more brown. And then just dot it in. Again, you can see how I've left lots of white spaces and that gives me that texture so that you can tell that they're, they're, they're feathers rather than just a big blob of solid color. Leave that, that's absolutely perfect. That's what you're looking for. It's kind of difficult to do once you've become used to say markers where you color the whole image, you don't wanna leave any white spots. So it is a different technique in that, in that way, but that's what we're aiming for. Don't be scared to leave those, those white spots. As you can see, it adds all that lovely texture. I'm gonna go back and do some more blue. Some of this bright blue, these little finches or these little wrens are really bright. Again, let's turn our work actually, and we're gonna pat in that blue. Remember we talked about leaving 
uh, some of that first layer visible to give us that contrast. So we're going to add a little more blue, but I'm going to make sure I'm not covering the entire area and I'm leaving quite a lot of texture in there to give the idea that they're feathers. So again, I'm going to turn my work so that the tip of my brush is the end of the feather. And I'm going to paint that in with patting, a patting motion. So touching down and not actually filling in the entire area. Same along the head. So that's our second layer on the bird. Now, oftentimes that's plenty if you've um, filled that in and you feel that the ink is enough. Sometimes when it dries, it becomes a lot lighter than you expect. So watercolor does dry lighter and you can go back in for a third attempt. All right, so now we're gonna come in with uh, the next blue, which is a faded jeans is the blue I'm using. And this is for the, the tail feather. So the tail feathers are darker, but I'm also going to mix in a little bit of the light blue as well, not much, and a little bit of the black. And that just gives me th that uh, continuity, I guess is the what we're looking for. So we still have those same kind of colors working in there. All right, so we finish the tail or the first layer of the tail with that those dark that dark blue remember turning your work so that the tip of your brush is at the tip of the tail and then we're going to drag in the direction of that feather all those feathers that we have left so we fill in all that space that's our first layer and you can also use this same mix to finish the rest of the bird's feathers here at the base of the tail. Again, patting in the color. Pat, pat, pat all the way in so that you've covered all that area. Okay. Now we're not going to do anything much more to the tummy, but as you can see, that is sort of one uh, one color it's it's a bit blobby I don't know how to describe it any better so what I'm going to do is my brush is a little bit drier get out some of that liquid pick up some of the color and then just we're just going to add a little bit so I'm not going to add too much because again I don't want that to be black I want it to be gray or white and I just want to add a little bit of shadow just around here where the leg is and under the, the body, under the wing. This is that second layer that we talked about. Turning my work so that I can have the point of the brush, just adding a little bit of texture there. So not too much. We don't want too much, but we don't wanna leave that sort of big uh, gray area that has sort of no texture or anything like that. We don't want it just to, to be one large plain area. Okay, so there's the tummies. Tummies are, are done. I'm going to add a little bit more black to parts of the leg. Again, we're not looking to paint to repaint the whole leg. Just adding a few um, extra areas of darker color to help with the detail around the foot as well. Here and there, especially where the leg comes out of the, the feathers there. If you darken that up, it makes it a little bit more obvious to see. All right, so there are the legs. Now, adding, I'm gonna put a bit more black over here actually. And we're going to work now on, again, the tail. Let's add a few more. This is our second layer now of the tail. So we're going to add some more black. Again, don't repaint the tail. We're just adding a little bit more here and there. Pull towards yourself with the color. It's a lot easier. And then the tip of the tail. Again, not repainting the entire thing. And our blue, out that dark blue that we were using before. Just 
just intensify some of those areas of color. Now remember that the drier your brush, the more intense that color is going to be. So less water in the ink will be a more intense color. Right. This is how you can help to differentiate those tail feathers, just by adding a little stripes of color. And I think that's enough probably for its tail. And we'll go back to those wings. So we're gonna add just a little, a little extra color to distinguish those wings. Again, I'm pulling toward myself, starting from the end and working up the feather and changing the, uh, the pressure that I place on the brush. So by pushing down on my brush, I'm opening up those bristles and getting a wide stroke. And as I work up the wing, I lift my brush and it ends in that nice fine stroke. So the same with this wing. If you push down, you get a wide stroke and then as you come up, you lift and that becomes a thinner stroke and that helps to define those feathers. Again, helps to just add that little bit of extra detail. And we're gonna do the same with these feathers here that we painted before, but I'm just going to apply a little bit I'm only up on the tip of my brush and I'm adding just a tiny bit of color around the base of some of those feathers and that just distinguishes the feather. So it adds a little bit more detail and a little bit more color to give the idea that we're actually looking at feathers. Right. Finally, let's add the black. So this black is really quite intense. Again, a drier brush now, and we're going to do the same thing. So we're gonna work those feathers in, same direction. Make sure that you're putting them in the same direction as, as the blue feathers that we did earlier. You want them all going the same way. Work up and around the eye. and then the beak. So just here and there on the beak, again, we're not repainting the entire beak, but it helps to give just a little bit more detail to the bird and here on his chest. You can see how I'm going beyond that stamped line and that's perfectly fine. You can do that, adding that detail wherever you think it needs to be. And here on this second bird. So the same thing, we're going to pat in that color, leaving plenty of texture. And like feathers, you want to sort of do it in lines, not too straight, but if you do sort of a line of feathers with a little bit of a curve, it has a more realistic look, especially when you're following the image that you've already stamped. Remember to leave gaps, plenty of gaps. And that's going to allow that lighter area to show through. And that's what's going to give you that beautiful texture and the variation. Again, work around the eye. We haven't done anything to our eyes yet but we are going to add some extra detail to the eyes. The eyes on any creature are really important that they become a focal area because humans, we're naturally drawn to looking at the eye. Whenever you look at a picture of a person or an animal, you will look to the eye. So we've got to make sure that that eye is detailed and obvious, but that's really hard to do with a brush unless you have a really fine brush. So we're gonna actually do that with a pen. All right, so I'm quite happy with that. Now they will, as I said, those colors will dry a little bit lighter. If you want to, you can come back in um, with those blues, mix the two together and add just a little bit more shadow here and there if you want to. But again, don't overwork it. You don't want to lose all those beautiful textures that you've spent so long adding. 
So don't overdo it, but if you want to touch up here and there. So have a good look at your picture before you start working on it. Sometimes it's it's hard to leave it alone, especially if you've enjoyed it and you're happy with how it's sort of turned out. You think, oh, just a little bit more, just a little bit more. I'm pretty guilty of that. I do that quite often. And then you end up overworking it. So I'll leave it to that. Now it's it will dry quickly because we're not using um, lots and lots of paint or water on, on there. It will dry quite fast. What I'm going to do next is work on the eye. Now I have lots of lots and lots of fine point pens of various types. Um, you want a nice, a really fine point. So this is just a point two. When you're buying your pens, the the the, um, the number will tell you how fine it is. So a point two is really fine. It's point two of a millimeter. For these birds, now they already have, the detail is already there in the eye. It's, it's probably a little bit difficult to see. They're so tiny, but they've got a pupil and they've got a white dot in the pupil. That white dot is what gives the eye life. So that what, that's what makes it shiny. That's what makes it looks, look uh, wet, like a, a tear, that sort of thing. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to take my pen and I'm going to trace around the outside at the top of the eye. So I've just kind of given it what looks like false eyelashes. Now for the under the eye, I'm going to do a little bit of a broken line. So not, I'm gonna kind of pat in the, the line rather than um, do a solid line. So around the top of the eye is a solid line. And then underneath the eye, I'm not sure if you can actually see this or not properly, but I'm going to kind of pat in pat in that line just a little bit and that just breaks it up so that it's not really solid you don't want to look like you know that it's in a rock band or anything like that next I'm going to color the entire pupil so I'm just going to go over the entire pupil including that white life dot or the dot the white light so that all we get is a fully black pupil so you can see it's very dark now I'm going to bring in my white pen now I'm just going to get it started on a scrap piece of paper and all I'm going to do is dot in that white shiny mark okay and that just brings them to life that brings the little bird to life and that is pretty much our picture done now if you wanted to what you could do is ground the image with a, a bit of paint in the background so to do that I'm going to use that same blue that same lovely bright blue that I used on the bird, but I'm going to water it down. So you can see here on my palette, my acrylic block, I'm adding heaps of water by squeezing the paintbrush. So this is going to be a really, really light blue. And I'm going to just drag that around my picture. So around the bird, I'm not going to touch, well, I'm gonna try and stay away mostly from the birds themselves where I've added that color because that will definitely make the colors run. So those colors, they do stay um, active. You can touch them and they will run. So you can see here already where the bird, where I touched the tip of the bird's beak and that color is running, which is fine. It doesn't matter if you do it, it's not a big deal. It actually adds to the image, but I'm going to try and keep it as clean as I possibly can, going fairly close. And I'm not going to worry about dragging that color all the way to the edges either. So I'm just going to go around the image and just bring the blue out. And again, I'm leaving, I don't know if you can see them, but I'm leaving sort of white gaps here and there in that background. I really like that textured look. If you don't, that's fine. You fill those white areas in, but I think in watercolor, they look really nice. So I'm going to, not going to worry if I miss areas. I'm not gonna purpose, purposefully add big white areas but if I leave some areas without any color I'm not going to worry about that too much same as if I do hit the leaves or or the bird I'm not going to worry too much if that color travels I'll take it all the way around you can see it's very very light and as it dries it will be even lighter but you will be able to tell it from that stark white background Now adding a color or a shadow or 
extra stamping around your main focal image. We call that grounding and that just means relating it to the background really, giving, giving your focal point a place to exist in the world. So adding this blue kind of simulates the sky and gives you the idea that these birds are outside in the garden with a be beautiful blue sky around them. So it gives them somewhere to exist. Right, so there we go, done. That'll just take a little while to dry and then it will be ready to use on a card or in a little frame or whatever you like. I can see that the, the white of the bird's eyes needs a little bit of touching up as that dries. So I'm going to, again, do the same thing again. Just get my pen started and just uh, tip more. Just tip the pen just on the very tippy tip. And then those eyes are nice and, and vibrant again. And there we have it. So I hope you enjoyed that tutorial and I hope you'll give it a go. It's just another way of, of coloring the image. There are certainly lots of other ways to do it, lots of other mediums. Um, I've got a couple here of cards that I've already made with this stamp set. This here I have embossed uh, the stamped image with, or heat embossed the stamped image with white embossing powder. And then just added a little bit of white pencil, uh, not even worrying where it goes really, just for that bit of variation. And this card I've used alcohol markers. So you can see that there's a there's a there's quite a difference depending on the mediums that you use. Uh, when, uh, of the finished products. They look quite different depending on what you're using to colour with. So thanks for joining me today. Um, please let me know if you have any questions. You can send me an email or hop over to the blog or even Facebook. I'm usually around the place. Now these stamps are available from some of the stockists. You can find the stockists for my stamps on the blog. Um, you can certainly email them. If you can't find it in their store, just drop them an email, ask them to order some in for you, and I'm sure they'd be very willing to do that. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.